So two days ago, we saw both AMD and Nvidia don the stage at CES 2022 to talk about their latest products and what's on the horizon. And while AMD's conference was broadly more accepted, both teams unveiled their latest low-end GPUs, the RTX 3050 and RX 6500 XT. And while they'll both be similar in price and specs, one may be easier to get hold of than the other. So stick around to the end to find out which one. Let's do this. Hey kid, how you doing? What the hell is that noise? What noise? Is that your computer? Oh, that noise. I've kind of got used to it now. That's my stock cooler. Sounds like you need the MSI Core Liquid S360 with its 2.4 inch IPS display, latest Acer Tech 7th generation pump, LGA 1700 support, and MEG Silent Gale P12 fans. You can't hear it coming. Sorry, what? I can't hear you over this stock cooler. Click the link in the description below and get one today. It sounds like you need it. Get it? So let's go through each card, its specs, and where each brand kind of sees it positioned in the market, and why one little thing could make the world of difference in terms of getting one. So starting with the RTX 3050, being part of the 30 series family sees it utilizing Nvidia's Ampere architecture. So we get all the goodies that come with it, along with third generation Tensor cores and second generation RT cores in a aim in bringing affordable 1080p graphics to the masses, while including the all important feature of ray tracing that we know Nvidia are all in on. It also comes with a bunch of features for streamers, content creators, and everything in between. But what about the numbers? What about the specs? Well, without just kind of reeling off numbers and sitting here, there are some important ones that we need to look at, like the fact that the 3050 will come with 2,560 CUDA cores, a base clock of 1,550 MHz, a boost clock of 1,780 MHz, and a 120-bit memory interface to harness the power of the 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. So for 1080p gaming, it all sounds pretty good. Fairly decent speeds, a good amount of cores, a nice amount of memory, DLSS, ray tracing, and a price tag of 249 US dollars. Though, if we're ever to see it for that price based on how things have been lately, well, that's anyone's guess. So how does the 6500 XT from Team Red fare in comparison? Well, being part of the 6000 series of GPUs means that we get to see the power of RDNA 2 at the base of it which even in our own testing with ray tracing and their own version of DLSS disabled, AMD are actually able to bring the fight to Nvidia in the latest DX12 titles, and in most cases, actually beat them. Now, while AMD don't have fancy Tensor cores or RT cores, they still have similar technologies with Fidelity FX Super Resolution to upscale the resolution in select games to give you a similar experience to DLSS. They also have ray accelerators to give users ray tracing functionality. And while Nvidia still hold the upper hand here, it's nice to see AMD making kind of slow and steady gains where it matters. So spec wise, the 6500 XT comes with 16 compute units, the same amount of ray accelerators, 1024 stream processors, 64 texture units, and 16 megabytes of infinity cache. Clock speed wise, I mean, it all sounds great. It comes in with a game frequency of 2610 megahertz and a boost frequency of 2815 megahertz. Now, one area where things do differ massively between the two cards is that the 6500 XT has a 64-bit memory interface and only four gig of GDDR6 memory. And this could actually be a very pivotal point in which one you end up buying. But before I get onto that, there's a couple of key points that I still just can't get my head around. And that comes down to power. The RTX 3050 lists the graphics card power at 130 watts and has a recommended PSU of 550 watts and uses a single eight pin connector. 6500 XT, however, comes in lower at 107 watts, requires a 400 watt PSU and uses a single six pin connector. So from the get go, it seems AMD have done the one thing that Nvidia have kind of always had, you know, had the upper hand on for years and they made a product that is potentially more energy efficient. Though before seeing any benchmarks or figures, we can't comment too much as it may also perform worse, though we're not sure that's really gonna be the case. Either way, even if it doesn't perform as well, one key area that it does win, well, comes down to price. And with a launch price of 199 US dollars, they do have Nvidia beat, albeit by $50. So when launch day comes, you have to decide if the extra $50 is worth it based on performance. 
So that's going to be an interesting one. Now, one thing I honestly can't see being worth it is what followed the announcement when we saw brands coming out with their custom designs of kind of all of the cards. And frankly, out of all of them, two stood out the most. The first being colorful, while not a brand that serves the Western market, they are extremely big in China and Asia as a whole, and generally include pretty outlandish design kind of decisions. Let's, let's you know, be honest with it. And the one that gets me is the RTX 3050 Ultra W OC. I get it, as the name suggests, it's an overclocked model, but so is their Ultra W Duo OC, with exactly the same speeds and specs that are under the hood. The only difference being from what I can see, apart from having an extra power connector, is that one unnecessarily has three fans on it, which probably actually explains the extra connector for the fans. This is a 130 watt card. Why has it got three fans on it? It didn't just stop there though. Azus took it to similar levels, announcing their RTX 3050 Strix card, featuring what can only be described as the exact same cooler as they use on their higher end 30 series cards. Now, I get it. I don't just wanna kind of bash on these brands as some people will buy these based on having quieter acoustics and amazing performance in terms of cooling and keeping that sustained level of boost. But, and it's a big, big but, at what cost? For a card that's due to be $249, I can't see these two models, especially the Strix, coming in anywhere lower than $449, US probably even more than that. It's just not going to happen. And that's based on kind of previous launches of other series cards and the price disparity between MSRP and Strix cards. So with that off my chest, I mentioned that one of these cards being either the RTX 3050 or the 6500 XT will be easier to get than the other. So which one is it? The RX 6500 XT from AMD. And for one very simple reason, comes with four gig of VRAM instead of eight. Why you ask? Dirty, rotten miners. We all want higher specs, more cores, more memory, because that's how marketing works. The higher number always wins. But that's not always the case, especially if it's not even in stock. Now, this all comes down to putting your thoughts into the mindset of a miner. What are they after? Well, quite simply, they want the quickest return on their investment. So let's say these cards do end up being sold for their respective MSRP pricing. When it comes to mining, memory can make the world a difference, depending on the type of cryptocurrency and the algorithm you're actually using to mine. I mean, take Ethereum for instance. Mining Ethereum on a four gig card simply can't be done, in the most straightforward sense of the phrase. In December of 2020, certain ways of mining Ethereum, well, ceased to exist on four gig cards. And slowly but surely, we've seen some of these lower end cards like 16 series or RX 400 and 500 cards actually appear back on the market for semi-reasonable prices. Yes, you could use other ways of mining altcoins and then converting them to Ethereum, but that's another big piece of the puzzle when, frankly, time is money, and I can't see many mining farms adopting that way of working. I mean, was this intentional from AMD? Apparently so, with Radeon's Vice President Laura Smith confirming that they've optimized the RX 6500 XT to be aimed at gaming first. So what does this mean for you as gamers? Well, it means the 6500 XT, obviously depending on how many AMD actually manufacture, could see it being available for gamers in abundance for a reasonable price point. And this could be the very moment where the scales finally tip in the favor of gamers. Yes, I get it. Some people will argue that four gig isn't enough in 2022. Still feels weird saying that. But VRAM for gaming really comes into play at higher resolutions. These cards aren't aimed at that. They are made for 1080p gamers. And with AMD already showing 1080p high setting performance of 108 frames per second in Resident Evil Village, 78 frames per second in Halo Infinite, and many more, this could be the very best GPU that we've seen in a long time. Not because it's the most powerful, but because it makes the most sense. And do you know what else makes sense? The eTechnics PC Maintenance Toolkit. With everything you need to build, repair, and maintain your PC. Grab yours over on store.etechnics.com today. And with that, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, you know exactly what to do. And actually, let me know in the comments section below if you want more of these kind of newsy style, talking head, unreleased product kind of breakdown stuff. Or if you want me to go back to actually showing off hardware more. This channel is more about the viewer than me, and we want to make 2022 our best year yet for content. So with that, I will see you in the next one. See you later, guys. Bye-bye.